Good morning everyone. I am the Wicked Garden Guy and in today's video I am going to go through my soil test results. Um, so let's go. I want to start this video off with um, recommending that at some point, whether it's spring or fall, uh, you should get a soil test. Do you necessarily need to get one every year? Maybe not. Um, but should you get one, um, get one to find out what your baseline is. Um, <clears throat> so I've been talking in other videos. Our lawn is fairly new. Front lawn, this is the second full summer on it. Back lawn, this is going to be the first full summer on the whole backyard. Uh, some of this uh, was existing lawn when we moved in. And this has been uh, where I've been trying to just um, try and renovate it without, um, without having to tear it up and doing a complete renovation, um, killing off the grass, or however, uh, however your, your game plan is for um, doing a complete renovation. <clears throat> um, but again, uh, you need to know what's in the soil. You need to know what, uh, what you should put down are you putting the right stuff down and the best way to do that is to uh, do a soil test um, are they the most expensive thing in the world no are they cheap no but um, if you're spending for me this was a this was just under forty dollars if I'm spending just under forty dollars and now I know that there's certain uh, items that I shouldn't put in the lawn uh, that is gonna save me a lot of money in the long run then to me it's uh, it's completely worth it. Um, for me, the two biggest things I was looking at were what my soil pH was and uh, what my phosphorus level was. Um, I was also concerned with other macronutrients and micronutrients um, as well, but um, <clears throat> those were the two biggest numbers that I was looking for. And then the other piece of this is I did learn uh, some additional numbers that I wasn't, uh, wasn't even thinking about, which were uh, pretty eye-opening. So, um, yeah, let's, uh, let's get to it. As I mentioned in my soil test video, I brought my uh, soil sample to Site 1. I have a, local, I have a lot of cycle, local Site 1s, uh, but I brought it to, uh, to one just a little bit north of me. They sent it out for testing and that it, they sent it to Spectrum Analytics. Um, from there, Spectrum Analytics uh, tested the soil and then sent it back to Site 1 with, um, with this sheet, which is my soil test results. And, um, you know, again, the, the two biggest numbers that I was concerned with were my pH. Uh, and traditionally here in New England, we have very acidic soil. Um, so I, I knew going in it was going to be low, I just didn't know how low. Uh, so it ended up being 5.9, uh, balanced pH is 7. Optimal pH for turf and ornamentals to grow is between 6 and 7.5. And so I'm not only at the bottom end of that range, I'm below that range, below that bottom. So um, I need to do some. Uh, some soil amending this summer, and that's uh, I, without uh, doing the soil test, I wouldn't know how much I need to uh, how much I need to amend the soil. So I am going to get into that in a little bit and what the game plan is. Um, but the other piece of it um, is the phosphorus. So again, in New England, we also have a very high level of phosphorus in our soil and typically you don't use phosphorus and fertilizer unless you're seeding to promote that root growth. Um, <clears throat> I spent a whole summer putting down almost no phosphorus last year and my levels were still really high. Breaking it down a little bit more, I realized I was using a Sanctuary from the Lawn Whisperers website and even though that was more for the uh, micronutrients that it had, uh, it did have some phosphorus in it, and that probably um, uh, facilitated the high, the level staying high. But it, going as I break this down further, you realize that it's not just the fertilizer that you put in; it's also guard dog.
Okay, I'm back. All right, so where was I? Um, a couple other numbers that really stuck out to me on the soil test were the um, the cation, cation exchange capacity. Uh, so that's, just, that, that's a number that I have never heard of until I did this test, and it's your soil's ability to hold nutrients. Mine is at a 4.9, which is on that range is very low. So basically what it's telling me is that I need to stay on top of the soil until I get it, until I get it amended into a point where it's um, it's easily maintainable. Uh, right now it's not, you know, when I'm putting different nutrients down, probably not so much the nitrogen, but um, you know, potassium and uh, magnesium and calcium and, and what's, whatever's in my liquid applications, uh, my soil is not holding on to it like it should to, to put back into the plant. It's probably absorbing it and not allowing it um, to uh, be absorbed by the plant. And um, so that, that's a big issue. Um, <clears throat> this is, take your, take your soil test with a grain of salt. So I took plugs from different areas of my lawn, put them into a bag, mixed them all together, and uh, and then sent it in to, um, or gave it a site one who sent us to Spectrum Analytics. My pH is may not necessarily be low in every area of my lawn, um, but there are a couple trouble areas that I've been having in the front, and those to me are where I really need to uh, focus on. Um, and keep an eye and that should give me a good indicator of how I'm doing with um, raising the pH and amending my soil. Uh, down, down near the front, near, near the road, uh, we did have some thinning last year. Uh, we did have a really bad summer with rain. There was a ton of rain. Um, I, had a, uh, I have a blend of ryegrass and bluegrass. Ryegrass can only handle so much water before it just says no moss. Bluegrass says, give me more, give me more. So my bluegrass really flourished, my ryegrass did not. Um, that being said, that's what I attributed to down on the, the front lawn, down near the road. But as I think about it and I look around and I look at these numbers, there's pine trees right above those areas. Um, <clears throat> so the pH there could be even lower than the 5.9 that my test is giving me. Um, so biggest takeaways that I have from my test, I have a low pH, I have, a high, fo I have high phosphorus. Um, the great thing about this soil test and almost all soil tests is uh, they, give you, uh, they give you recommendations. So uh, what I might have thought would be uh, you know, an easy application of lime to help with the pH, uh, turns out I need, um, uh, my recommendation is 25 pounds of lime per thousand square feet this year. So that's a, that's a lot. I have a 20,000 square foot lawn and I used five bags uh, that covered 4,000 square feet five 50 pound bags that covered 4,000 square feet of bag. Um, <clears throat> so what I am planning to do is I don't want to put 25 pounds of <laughs> lime on my lawn all at once. I am splitting it into two applications. So a couple, I've already started and I've started implementing uh, about two weeks ago, I applied uh, 12 and a half pounds per thousand square feet of lime and follow that up with my first uh, fertilizer application. I am then gonna, in, so in another two weeks, because I go on a four week fertilizer schedule, I'm gonna do my next application of lime. So I'll add another 12 and a half pounds per thousand square feet. Um, <clears throat> my nitrogen levels are adequate and in a good spot, so they're recommending nothing more than a, a typical um, nitrogen application for the year, three to four and a half pounds of nitrogen um, for the whole year. 
So, so that's just a quick review of my results um, and my experience with Site One. Again, uh, one of the nice things, and this is not specific to Site One. This is, you know, if you have a local extension office um, or a local gardening center, they will probably have something like this. But one of the nice things that uh, Site One does is they have a five-step program um, that is all typed out and pretty generic to um, to the New England area. So obviously I need to do additional amendments, but for the most part, I can follow this fertilizing schedule and be perfectly fine uh, on the year. And then I can add in my, um, my specific needs. So your extension office, uh, your site one, if you have, if you have any local to you, um, or other, uh, other stores would have something like this as well. So take advantage of your resources. Um, I took advantage of getting a soil test and knowing what I need to do now. Take advantage and taking advantage of uh, this program. Um, you know the the Scott Step Four, uh, four or four step. A lot of people use and a lot of people have a lot of success with it. Um, you know it's a company that's been around for a long time and uh, and has a proven track record. So um, there's there's all sorts of different resources out there. Don't just throw stuff onto your lawn um, because you think it'll work. Uh, no, uh, no, <laughs> no before you go, uh, type of thing is, uh, before I put something on the grass, I want to know, is this going to benefit me or is it going to, um, uh, is it going to be, uh, work against me? So that's all I have today. Uh, have a great weekend and we will, uh, see you in the next one.